Good day students, welcome to MathGodServe.com. On this clip, we're going to be going over problem 5 of the 2003 AP Calculus AB um, free response question, focusing on differential equations. All right, question 5 is as follows. It reads, a coffee pot has the shape of a cylinder with a radius 5 inches, as shown in the figure above. Let H be the depth of the coffee pot. Um, measured in inches, where h is a function of time t measured in seconds. The volume v of um, coffee in the pot is changing at negative 5 pi root h cubic inches per second. The volume v of the cylinder with radius r and height h is given by volume equals pi r square h. All right, so let's take a look at the a part. It says show that the h to t Instantaneous change of height with respect to time is equal to negative root 5, I mean root h over 5. Okay, so we're going to be differentiating um, an equation here, but one thing you want to keep in mind, let's just call this a tip, um, is um, always check for agreement. Check for agreement um, when differentiating, okay? So what on earth am I talking about when I talk about uh, checking for agreement? You won't always want to look at what you're differentiating with respect to. If the variables are different, then there's a disagreement, and you have to add d of that variable d, the variable you're differentiating with respect to, okay? I'll go over this in more detail as I solve the problem. Before we go ahead and um, show that dh dt is equal to negative root h over t, let's go over the steps, okay, so I don't lose anyone. Steps for the problem solving process are as follows. Number one, um, write down the formula. Write down the formula. There are different equations here, so it's very important that you identify the correct um, piece that you are trying to differentiate to achieve this um, equation right here, okay? Write down the formula for volume. Number two, we're then going to differentiate uh, with respect to time, with respect to time. Now, how do we know that we're differentiating with respect to time? Well, you look at what goes next to the d in the denominator. That is what you're differentiating with respect to, okay? So we're differentiating with respect to time. After doing that, um, three, you're going to make a substitution, okay? You are going to substitute um, negative 5 pi root h for dv dt. What is dvdt? dvdt is basically the rate at which volume the volume is changing. Okay. Now, if you take a look at the problem, you're told that the volume of the coffee is changing at a rate that is basically dvdt, the rate at which the volume is changing, and this is a value. So that's why I got um, the expression in step three that I will be substituting for dvdt. Okay, if you look at the final form that we need, it only has the HTT, okay? So we need to get rid of dvdt by substitution. And then finally, you solve for or isolate dvdt, the HTT, all right? Solve for the HTT, and you will be done. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Um, step number one. What's the volume formula? They're nice enough to provide it for us. V is equal to pi r square h. So V is equal to pi r square h. Okay, so now if I did the formula next, we're going to differentiate with respect to time. So we're going to be um, differentiating the left side ddt of V is equal to, and then the right side uh, d dt, derivative with respect to time, of pi r square h, okay? Now, I was talking about agreement earlier on. Now, if you look at what you're differentiating with respect to, it's t, and the variable on the left side is v. So, we have a disagreement there. 
So that simply means you differentiate that variable and then you add d of that variable d dt, the variable we are differentiating with respect to. Okay? Now, what's the derivative of v? Just think about it. If you differentiate in x, what's the derivative of x? That's just 1, right? So if you differentiate v, you're going to have 1. But since there's a disagreement here, you have to use a chain rule and differentiate v with respect to time. So you have to add on dv, dv dt because of this agreement. Why don't we have dx dx here? Because the variables agree, right? And then even if you write dx dx, guess what? It cancels out, and then you end up with 1, OK? So um, when there is this agreement, you always have to add this portion. That's as a result of the chain rule, OK? Now, let's take a look at the right side. Now, we have two variables here. We have r squared and h. So you might think, oh, we have to use a um, product rule and stuff like that. But take a look at what we're dealing with here. We're dealing with a cylinder, OK? We can clearly see that the height is changing. What's happening with the radius? Is the radius changing? The answer is no. The radius is constantly 5. Okay, the radius doesn't change in this equation. So you can, if you want, you can just factor out um, this constants, pi r squared, their constants, and then you just differentiate what changes, which is h with respect to time. Okay? All right, let's keep on going. And now we have dv dt equals... What is r? r is always 5, right? So we can plug that in there. So we have 25 pi. Now, do these two variables agree? The answer is no. Okay, so what are we going to do with differentiate h first? Just like you're differentiating x, it's going to be 1. And then we have to add on dh dt because of the disagreement that's happening between these two variables right here, just as we did with the v um, situation. All right, so let's make this look uh, pretty. Um, so we can write this as dv dt equals 25 pi dh dt. Okay? All right, so we have accomplished step two, which is to differentiate the equation with respect to time. Step number three, we only need the only... Um, the derivative with respect to time we need is dht, so we need the vdt gone. Um, so we have a um, value, an expression to replace the vdt with. So in step three, we know that um, you have to state that dv dt is equal to negative 5 pi root h. Okay? That's what dv dt is. You can either write this down or you can compute the volume of the solid and differentiate it with respect to time. Okay, it's already given for you to you here, so you don't have to bother finding the volume and then differentiating with respect to time. You're just going to waste your time. So you state this, and now we're going to substitute that into this right here. So by substitution, we have negative 5 pi root h equals, that's what dv dt is, 25 pi dh dt. All right. Now, I want to get dh dt isolated, so we simply divide both sides of our equation by 25 pi, the coefficient of dh dt. Okay, using a reflexive property of equality, we can write this as dh dt. On the right side, the 25 pi is divide out, okay? That's the goal. And on the right side, the pi is divide out. Pi goes here once, pi goes here one, five goes here once, five goes here five times. So you're left with negative h, oh sorry, negative root h over five as the value of the h dt. Okay, so the goal Initially, it was to show that the HDT is equal to negative root, five, root H over 5. We have accomplished that. Box your final answer. Okay, so how are you graded on this question? Um, first of all, you get one point for stating that um, DVDT 
is equal to negative 5 pi root h. Can you decipher that from the given information? Or can you find this out by finding the volume of the solid of the um, cylinder and finding how the volume changes with respect to time in terms of h? And then you get another point by differentiating um, this equation right here, carrying out all your substitution to end up with um, this equation right here. That's the computation of dv dt. And then uh, the last one involves combining these two together and solving for dh dt. You get one point for getting the final answer for a total of three points in this question. All right, let's take a look at the B part. It says, given that H is equal to 17 at time T equals zero, solve the differential equation dH dt equals negative root H over five for H as a function of T. All right, so we're gonna be solving a differential equation in this um, part of problem five. So um, what we're going to do, let's go over the steps first, okay? The steps for solving um, our differential equation. Now, the differential equation problems that are normally presented um, on the AP exam most of the time involve separation of variable. There was one one year where it was something else, but in most cases, it's um, separation of variable. So that's what this example is, and that's what I'm going to be going over right now. All right, so step number one, um, starting um, with the differential equation, you're going to separate the variables, okay? Separate the variables. That's why this method is called separation of variables. Step two, you're going to integrate both sides, integrate both sides and simplify. All right, and then upon simplification, you're going to use the initial condition, use the initial condition, so condition, Um, in this case, you have h is equal to 17, where t is equal to zero. So there are two other ways, two other formats that the initial condition can be presented in. It can be presented at, in a function format, where you have h of the independent variable is equal to the output 17, or they can give you a, an ordered pair, 0, 17. Okay, all these are just telling you that t is zero and h is 17. So use the initial condition h of 0 equals 17 to find c. Okay, now after finding c, you're going to substitute the value of c back into uh, equation, into the equation in R2. Okay, into, let me just write 2, save time back into two. That's simplified um, equation where you integrated both sides. And then uh, to finish it off, you just solve for H. Okay, solve for H. Okay, all right, let's go ahead and uh, get started with the application of these steps. So we are going to start with our differential equation which is uh, dh dt um, equals negative root h over 5, okay? When you ask to solve a differential equation, you're asked, you're basically isolating the variable on the, on the upper left corner. So the goal is to get h by itself. All right, so first thing we're going to do is separate the variables. Since h is on the upper left corner, let's, that tells us that h is will be on the left side. And the t's in the denominator here, that means all the t's are going to be on the right side, including constant, okay? So let's see, what do we do here? To get this root h to the left, I'll multiply both sides by 1 over root h, and then here by 1 over root h. Okay, so what we're going to have is um, 1 over root h, dh dt, 
equals, so these two divide out, negative 1 over 5. Okay, now um, we need the t's and everything else on the right side. I just need only the h's on the left side. So to accomplish that, I will multiply both sides of my equation by the t. Okay, on the left side, the t's uh, divide out. So I'm left with 1 over root h dh equals negative 1 over 5 dt. What have I just accomplished? I have just separated the variables. Okay, now um, step two, we're now going to integrate both sides with respect to, uh, to the left side with respect to h, the right side with respect to t. All right, so um, <clears throat> let me just separate it right here so we don't get all, the, all our steps clustered up. So we have this on the left, the h, and then on the right, the t. Now we're going to integrate them independently. Imagine as though you have two expressions to integrate, okay? All right, on the left side, this looks weird. Can we rewrite it in such a way that we can apply uh, an easier rule, like maybe the power rule? The answer is yes. This can be rewritten using um, your reciprocal property of exponents as h to the negative one half. Okay, so I can now, I, I've written it as a power, so I can just use a power rule there. This is a constant, I can factor it out. So I'm integrating dt, or you can think about, put the one there if, if that makes um, it easier for you. Okay, so let's integrate. Using your power rule on the left side, we're going to have h to the negative one half. You, um, add one to the power and divide it by the same value power plus 1 equals negative 1 over 5. Now, what's the antiderivative of t? Imagine you have a t to the 0, and if you apply the power rule there, it's going to be t to the 0 plus 1 over 0 plus 1, which is just t to the 1, which you can write as t. Okay? Uh, plus the constant c. This c is a combination of the c from the left and the c on the right, since they're both indefinite integrals. All right, let's go ahead and make this look pretty. Um, uh, simplify it a little bit more. Now, let's see. We have on the left side, h to the negative 1 half plus 1 is 1 half over the same thing on the bottom equals negative 1 over 5t plus c. Okay, we can still process this a little bit further, further. So this becomes 2 root h equals negative 1 over 5t plus c. Now, on the AP exam, um, the differential equation solving problems normally carry the most points in, in each part, 99% of the time. Okay, so you want to make sure you show all your steps. Don't skip any step. Don't try doing stuff in your head. That's that's pointless. Make sure you show all your steps so you can accumulate most as many points as possible. All right. Now um, we have this so far. We've just accomplished step two, integrating both sides and simplifying. Now we need to find the value of c to accomplish that. Step three, we're going to substitute substitute um, 0 for t and 17 for h. That will help us solve for c, okay? So we're going to have 2 root, instead of h, you have 17 equals negative 1 foot, 1 fifth. Instead of t, you have 0 plus c. All right, so we have 2 root 17, negative 1 5 times one fifth times zero is zero. Down, there goes your c value, two root seventeen. And then in step four, we're gonna substitute this back into the result we got in step two. So we're gonna have two rad h equals negative one over five t plus two root seventeen. Okay. And then step five is to get h isolated. Okay, so we have, let me rewrite what we got from step four, two 
root h equals negative 150 plus 2 root 17. Now, to get h isolated, we start by dividing both sides by 2 or multiplying by 1 half. Since we have a fractional situation here, I could just uh, multiply by 1 half. That's easier to deal with than this situation. So that leaves me with rad h equals, now I'll just distribute 1 half to both terms here, negative 1 over 10 t plus, this 2 divides with that 2, so you're left with rad 17. Okay, the last step to get h isolated involves using the inverse of square root, which is square. So you just simply square both sides to get your final result. Um, h is equal to the quantity negative 110 t plus root 17, all raised to the second power. Okay? And don't forget to box your answer so that it's easier for you for graded to identify your final result. Okay, so let's go over the number, the, how the point system works for this one. Uh, let's see. Um, so for this one, you get one point for separating the variables. Step one, separating the variables, you get one point there. Uh, and then if you successfully find the antiderivative of both sides, you integrate both sides correctly, you get another point. If you add the C, you see the C right here? Just by writing that C as part of the solution, guess what? You get another point, okay? Next, if you use the initial condition, you get another point, bam. So you see, you've already earned four points. And then lastly, all this computation here, you get one point, okay? You get a total of one, two, three, four, five, five points in this question. So you see that every little piece plays a role in earning full credit. So that's why I said don't skip steps or cut corners. Just write down everything. The more mathematics you show, the more likely you are to score higher on your, on your problems, all right? So that's basically how you do this problem. All right, let's take a look at our part C, the last one in this question. It says, at what time T is the coffee pot empty? So let's go back to this figure we have. All right, so the H basically represents how much coffee you have in the cylinder. Now, if you don't have any coffee, how high will the coffee level be? It's going to be zero, right? It's gonna be right here. H is going to be zero. So what this question is asking you to do is to solve for the T value uh, when H is equal to zero. Okay, so let's just write a real quick remark. The uh, coffee pot is empty when h is equal to zero. Okay, now this problem part c is actually dependent on part b because this equation explicitly relates h and t along, so we can just plug in 0 for h in this result from part b, and so for t, and that will be the result we're looking for. All right, so let's start with um, h equals negative 1 over 10 t plus root 17 square. This is from b. This is the kind of question where if you get b wrong, then you don't have any hope for part c, so this is from b. Okay, and then we just substitute 0 for h, and then we have 0 equals negative 1 over 10 t plus root 17 square. Okay, so let's go ahead and get uh, t isolated. We'll undo the square by using the inverse square root, so you take the square root of both sides. Uh, square root of 0, 0 equals negative 1 over 10 t plus right 17, and um, we just subtract right 17 from both sides. If we do that, we end up with, uh, let's see, negative 1 over 10 t equals negative right 17. Now to get t isolated, what do we do? multiply by the reciprocal of the coefficient, which is uh, negative 10 over 1. 
on both sides. And then on the left side, you end up with T. And on the right side, you have 10 rad 17 because the uh, minus or minus gives you plus. And that goes to your final time for when um, the coffee pot is empty or basically when, uh -oh, when H is equal to zero. Okay, so don't forget to box your final answer so it's easy for your grader to see how it works. And then for this problem, guess what? For all this hard work, you get exactly one point. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. I really appreciate it. If you found the contents of this tutorial helpful in your preparation for the AP Calc exam, do give us a thumbs up. Your positive feedback is very valuable and supportive to us. If you have any questions or comments, just include it in the comment section below, and we'll be more than glad to support you. Do not forget to subscribe to our channel for updates to the remainder of this review series. More clips can be found on math.serve.com. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.